All right, guys, today we're going to be doing something a little bit antithetical, or at least in the opposite direction of what most EDC people on YouTube do. And that is that I see a lot of channels talking about their favorite budget blades, and we'll probably talk about, you know, awesome uh, EDC budget blades that are fun to carry. And certainly I do carry some, like this Pilar here, that are really cool, totally awesome to EDC. But today I really wanted to talk about EDC my favorite expensive knives and it's primarily because I think for most EDC people most of us are collectors of mostly knives and so it's cool I think to try to give people ideas of what to look for what you should like aim for you know things that are really cool excite me and just awesome knives in general uh, so I thought I would talk about my favorite expensive knives that I like of course I do have more than this uh, for expensive knives but these are the ones that I love to EDC love to carry love to take pictures of and just make for really cool blades in general and you know high-end knives are definitely less attainable but more something to work towards and a lot of us love to collect so instead of continuing to collect Savitis, CRKTs and you know just some of the lower end stuff and having a whole bunch of knives what I like to do is have you know like a handful maybe 20 really nice folders and carry those instead so at least that's my mantra and I think a lot of people as they kind of mature in EDC they end up wanting the nicer things anyways so this video just kind of serves as a point of reference of course everyone's taste is different some people may like some of the knives I show and some people may not that's why the even high-end knives there are so many options things like Shirogorov's, Grismo, Norrisman's and many other blades out there so these ones are not those but if you do like those you know different tastes for everyone else so so let's jump right into it with my favorite one of them all and the one that I love to carry the most and that is the full-sized or three and a half inch XM18 by Hinder. and this little guy right here is partly my favorite because of the custom mods that have been done to it and partly because I think it's just a really rad looking blade so to start off this is a 20 CPM 20 CV steel recurve blade by Hinder. of course with Hinder you can get many different flavors from spanto tips recurves to harpoon points and even just more standard blades um, anyways that is the uh, steel or that is the blade on this guy now the next thing that is kind of different with this one is it does I should point out on this side have a blue a blue lock tab and a blue clip on it it also on this side has purple handle scales and a purple liner on the inside so I'm not really sure how well that will show up on video it's really hard to see and then lastly this one has a skiff bearing or skiff bearings on it so it is super super smooth and uh yeah this guy is so nice to deploy open cut things with carry it's just a super well-rounded blade and most of all for me uh from the aesthetics of the color of the handles to the blade shape itself this blade just really does check all the boxes for me and i absolutely love the way that this guy looks can't even keep it open it just is that smooth but anyways a really tra attractive knife and something that I really do love to carry. Next one, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, is my Strider SNG. Now, admittedly, I'm not a huge Strider fan. Most people that own Striders tend to own lots of Striders. I'm not that case. I will probably own one to two. I obviously have one SNG. I'll probably pick up another at some point, especially those ProTech Auto Striders. Those are pretty cool, but I did want a real deal Strider SNG. So this is mine. It has the gunner grip for those who are wondering, G10 gunner grip on it. And of course the tiger striped blade in S30V. Now this one has S30V, but with Striders, they're just a little bit different because of how they heat treat their steels. So this is a lower heat treat or lower Rockwell. So it is designed for dirt durability in mind. Overall though, it's just a really rad kind of tanky blade. As I've mentioned in other videos, I don't really love tanky knives. So this is kind of my tanky, so this is kind of my tanky blade. And uh, that's kind of the reason I carry it, have it in the collection, aside from the fact that it's a Strider. And I like having some good representation in my collection. Next one up on the list is the Inkosi. Now for a while, my number three was the CRK Sabenza, but the Inkosi by CRK or Chris Reeve Knives is really 
just the modern version of the Sebenza or kind of their modernized take on it with a number of updates and different features I've talked about in other videos. And overall, the Nkosi is just a really cool blade and uh, I really do enjoy mine personally. I think it's pretty cool. They are really hard to find, unfortunately, because they are more collectible and they are tend to be made in lower batch numbers. But this large Nkosi is definitely on my list because it is a very classy blade and it looks really good, especially when opened, but even when closed, it looks like a really classy blade. It fits into a lot of different um, everyday carry situations and uh, different kind of philosophies of use. So it's a really nice blade, a really cool blade. Mine is still a little bit stiff because it is still new and being broken in, but hopefully it will loosen up here soon. And uh, I'm just gonna continue to flick it open until it does, because that is the way I do with my CRKs, even though you're not supposed to. I definitely treat them however I want. <laughs> so anyways, the next one up on the list is the small XM18. And this guy is, I like it for a lot of the reasons I like my large XM18. I just think that these are really nice, really easy to pocket blades. And probably my favorite part about the three inch XM18 as opposed to the three and a half inch XM18 is size and weight. This guy is not that much smaller in length, but the fact of the matter is with the smaller blade, it's just overall shrunk down. So it makes for a much more pocket friendly little knife. So that's why I like this little XM18 three inch. I find that whenever I want a small high end blade, I'm usually reaching for this guy because it is just such a small little blade but still super pocket friendly and one thing I do like about Hinder as a whole as opposed to other blade shapes like or other blade makers like CRK as you guys can see here you know uh, when it comes to their smaller knives they feel a lot smaller and a lot less useful because with um, Hinder they are all cut for finger grooves so even though you have a smaller blade or a smaller handle I should say and smaller blade for that matter uh, they feel a lot more usable or you can get your hand really on them because they have that forward finger choil. So even if your hand's a little bit bigger and it might want to, you know, like slide off of the handle, you can put your finger up there and just get really locked into the blade. So that's something I do like about it. These smaller hinders, they feel just very comfortable. Okay, last one up on the list of top five, and they do really have to be good to cut it, is of course the Sebenza 21. I like this guy, not only because I really like this blade shape or tip shape, the Tanto or Tanto tip from Chris Reeve is just so nice looking. I love how it just flows into this very sharp, very acute point, and uh, I just think it's really well done. Like their standard drop point, there's nothing wrong with it. It is a nice, looking blade shape. It's very classic and a lot of people that like just a very well-refined blade end up liking the drop point. So definitely most consumers like that. But man, I really do love their, the way they do their tontos because it just is this long flowing kind of belly that then just straightens out or kind of straightens out into this really sharp, very, very fierce, mean tip. So I do love their tonto and for that, part of the reason I love carrying this knife. The other reason is it is just so smooth, so thin, so minimal. And for me, I've had this one once again for I think about three years now. So she is well broken in, she fires hard and is just such a joy to carry. So that is my CRK Sebenza 21. It is still on the list, just a little bit lower. It used to be number three, but like I said, the Nkosi has kind of replaced it in that regard because the Nkosi is just a little bit more refined and a little bit better in my opinion. So anyways, those are some high-end knives. Like I said, not everyone's gonna agree with my list. Not everyone's gonna like the same knives. And there are plenty of high-end makers out there like Chavez and so many out there that uh, it's hard to list in all all in one video, but I think that these guys are definitely, obviously the classic three companies that really started high-end knives and they are still very nice knives even to this day. So if you have any of them on your hit list, I would definitely say go for them, you won't regret it. If you don't have any of these knives on your hit list, I would at least at minimum tell you to add a CRK Sebenza 21 or 31. I personally prefer the 21 over the 31, but you know, either or, they're very similar knives. 
but that is such a classic blade. I've had multiple 21s and uh, it's very hard to go wrong with. I definitely like the um, Insingo grind or Insingo tip as well, but uh, CRK, they just do a great job on all their stuff. And you know, some people might argue with me on Hinder, you know, about having weak detents, weak detents or maybe weak heat treats, you know, that is, you know, an argument that's made, I don't find that as valid, but the Chris Reeves are absolutely bomb proof and they are amazing knives. And the hint or the Striders are as well. And in my opinion, the Hinders are as well. <laughs> but anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.